whilst I've just been getting set up to start vlogging, I've just seen a stout in the garden. At first I thought it was a rat, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh my God, there's a rat in the garden. And then on the second take, it was 100% a stout and it was just running around Lydia's vegetable garden, probably seeing if there was anything in there to eat. And I may be wrong, but I feel like they're really rare. There's probably a place in England where you commonly see them, but I personally have only ever seen one run past the back of our kitchen bifold doors in the past. Never seen one ever again, never seen one before. And it looked really small, probably looked about this big, which could be a young stout, or that might be as big as they get. But it looked very cute. If I see it again, I will definitely try my best to capture it. I know where it's gone, it's headed into my neighbors. So if it does come back, we'll try and capture that on camera because I feel like they're rare. Tell me if I'm right, tell me if I'm wrong. But seeing a stout in the UK in your garden, I'm not sure how common that is. Anyway, welcome. It feels like a while since I've vlogged at the house. To you guys, probably not so much, but I have been to the Caribbean. I've also been and done a very exciting factory tour in Northamptonshire, which all will be coming out over the next couple of weeks on my YouTube channel, so stay tuned for that. But today, before I get stuck into today's video, I'm pretty confident Lydia would have already shown this on her channel, but you may remember that a few weeks ago, I talked about having some items framed and some artwork framed at the Framing Centre in Milton Keynes, and I laid out the newspaper cuttings that were from the newspaper that was discovered when my granddad passed away in his closet, and nobody could really work out why he kept these. And I can kind of understand why he may have kept some of them because they were obviously related to the war. They were reprints of newspaper articles that were directly um, published during the war, which were the articles that I didn't go ahead and get framed because they weren't originals and they didn't have the actual age of the papers that we did get framed. And the second paper that we found that was from the 18 or 1700s those particular papers looked really cool. And so we took them to the framing center and we laid them out and we selected three cuttings that were ripped very meticulously to ensure that they looked as nice as possible. And we had them mounted, framed with art glass. And if I show you those now, you'll be able to see that we had a set of three which were originally supposed to go. You'll see the paneling on the back wall. They were going to go one, two, three and they still might do so, but we're so chuffed with how these have turned out. We might actually position these in the hallways just so they can be enjoyed a little bit more because typically when people come over, not many people come into the office, special invite only in here. And so having these on show may be something that's quite nice. They're a bit of a talking point, quite interesting. This particular one was published in oh, 1923, which was a financial article. It talks down here about the foreign exchange today's market in London, in New York. And so it's pretty much focused around finances. And then behind a second paper that touches on the financial market. And then, oh, we're upside down there. <laughs> this cutting here, we loved because of all the adverts on it. And you can see how the paper's been torn and mounted onto this brown backing board. And then we selected a wooden, quite a slim frame frame. And then we had a nice, I'm not sure what these are called, but I guess like a border, which almost has an antique brass kind of effect to it. It is wooden, but it just really complemented the paper and the frame and it just feels really well thought through. I mean, it was well thought through. We put a lot of effort into picking and selecting our frames and our backing, etc. But the artwork just works really nicely in both my office and my wardrobe. So there are lots of places and of course the hallways and stuff as well. And also the back guest bedroom en suite, which has now been painted in bronze. So it just, there are so many places that this works really nicely. So we need to decide where this is gonna go. We do have art glass on this, currently standing right in front of a window. So you'll see that we are getting a reflection. However, in the majority of locations in the house, this actually won't show any reflection. So it will look like there is no glass on this and this paper is just mounted and exposed, which is a really nice effect. And we like to get as much art glass when we're framing our art as possible, if we don't go glassless. So these um, needed to be protected because we needed to make sure that the paper stayed flat and so it kind of squashes it into place. They've done a really nice job. So we have a set of three of those 
And this one I was really intrigued about. It's a lot bigger. This is from 1843. It's a News of the World article, late London edition. It touches on a lots of different subjects. I'm assuming that this was the front page of the paper. You've got the little HP source in the top corner, little Guinness ad down in the bottom corner. Down here you can see that. Touching on some sport, the Royals. So yeah, there's lots to digest on this particular piece, but we had it mounted again on a brown backing. And we've also kept with that antique brassy wooden trim, which borders the frame, but the frame is in a leather and I've never seen a frame in leather before. It's a lot thicker than the last ones, but if I bring that a bit closer, you'll hopefully be able to see. It's just a really nice texture to put on a frame. And when I saw it, I was like, yes, that is amazing. Not sure exactly where this is going to live in the house, but I'm sure Lids and I will find many places that this will work. It's pretty big, so I thought maybe the hallway initially could have been an option. That guest bedroom with the bronze would look incredible in there. It just feels really nice to have had these items because to me, they hold some value, some sentimental value. I appreciate that they don't hold any financial or monetary value to a lot of people, but I don't have many sentimental things. I don't like to collect sentimental things if I'm honest, but these are um, just something that are really lovely and that can be enjoyed. Those are the newspaper cuttings that were framed, which I really wanted to show you. I'll quickly run over a couple of other pieces, but we won't stick on them for too long. So firstly, we were so pleased with the selection of the frames that we did on the trio of cuttings that we decided to um, mimic or duplicate that onto this piece of art that Lydia actually picked up when we visited Scotland. So we actually visited this set of houses. This is from a local artist. Lydia actually did this with a green border, but kept the same frame set with the antique brassy woody trim with the wood border. So this would look really lovely in any of our bathrooms and en suites. I'm not sure exactly where this will go. It even worked really nicely in Lydia's wardrobe. We've made sure that we've kept a lot of flexibility and versatility in the framing that we selected, which I think is really important because it is nice to move art around. It doesn't have to stay put wherever it does go. That was that piece, which Lydia was very happy about. And then this has to be one of my favorite pieces. It was framed in this really distressed, it's got loads of imperfections in it, wooden frame. It's got a nice rich red undertone to it. And it is Mr. Fox. I'm voting that this goes in my wardrobe. The tones of it just work so nicely. Obviously got that antique brass worktop and I feel like Mr. Fox just complements it really nicely. And as you know, we have a Mr. Fox that comes in the garden. It looks very similar. This is a male fox. I believe the white chest means that it's male. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not 100% sure on that. Do you Googles? <laughs> but it just looks absolutely incredible. No glass on this, as you'll see. So as I mentioned, we like to keep them as raw as possible because I feel like it really shows off the art nicely. That is the artwork that we've had framed recently. And there are a couple of other pieces that we do have, but I'm not gonna show you those because we've not had them framed. They're just pieces that Lydia's picked up in antique stores. However, we are in April, which is a very busy birthday month. Not only do Lydia and I share birthdays together, we also share birthdays with our fathers as well. So there is lots going on, which is very exciting, but it has been a very busy few weeks and there's lots of moving components. And so typically Lydia and I like to throw a big party or go to some really fancy restaurant or even take a break and go away for a long weekend. However, this year, because of all of that. We've decided that both of us would actually just really appreciate some time at home together. And so this week's video is actually in partnership with LG and the LG Cinebeam Q, which is this really cool projector that you can see here. Now I'm going to create a date night environment for Lids and I to spend the evening watching a film together in the greenhouse. Now, originally the idea was to watch a movie under the stars, a little bit cliche, I know, but I thought it would be really, really nice because Liz absolutely loves spending time during the spring, summer months in her greenhouse. And we have the biethanol burner in there and heaters so we can get the space to feel really cozy and warm. It's also very busy in the house today. And so for me to get out of the way also worked very nicely. I'm going to spend, I guess, the majority of my day despidering jet washing, cleaning, and creating a nice environment in that greenhouse 
and then I'll put a couple of armchairs in there, a table. We'll get the projector set up and also I picked up a screen to project it onto. And then I'll probably put together some picky bits and a drink so we can go and enjoy that environment later on today. This particular device I will talk you through when we're all set up but it's very, very cool and very convenient. And I think that we're gonna have a lot of fun throughout the year using this both out in the garden and in the home. So I will probably pick back up with you once I've done the majority of the setup, um, just so I can get cracking on with it. I am kind of gonna be making this up a little bit as I go along. I have literally just got back. So I haven't had much time to particularly plan ahead of this evening but it is the best evening for us to do it. It's my birthday tomorrow and both of us have got a very busy week and then the weekend also. So I will check in with you very soon and hopefully we'll have a nice date night set up in the garden for us to enjoy a film together to celebrate our birthdays. I have just finished up setting up for this evening's date night and I'm firstly very pleased with how it's come together. I think Lydia's going to be over the moon that I jet washed her floor and it looks absolutely lovely in here. I also did a little bit of cleaning everywhere else inside the greenhouse as well. But as you can see, we have this evening set up. I think it's quite fair to say that this is probably Lydia's dream movie night setup. I've despided the place, I've got everything nice and tidy. We have the LG Cinebeam Q ready to go alongside leaving some space for a charcuterie board, some drinks and anything else that we want to bring in here with us. I will grab a couple of throws that we'll be able to chuck over the chairs just in case it does get a little bit cold. However, I'm hoping it won't because I have also set up the burner which I think is going to add a really nice ambience in here but also functionally give us some heat. So that's been set, ready to go. I've also popped some of Lydia's vegetables that she started to grow in the greenhouse on the floor. Also got the lemon trees back in here and some herbs. So I've just sort of decorated the space to give it a green feel and anywhere that needed a little bit of TLC, a bit of coverage, such as the electrical box. I've just chucked what I could in front of it. I've also had a scattering of candles that I've put in the room again not to be too cheesy, but just to create a nice atmosphere and vibe. There won't be any red petals laid out on the floor, I'm afraid. <laughs> and um, yes, the chairs are the new Neptune chairs that we recently picked up. They've got a nice cushioned back as well, so they'll be really comfortable to sit in. This screen, which I just grabbed from Amazon, and this is actually a good screen for projecting onto because the way in which it absorbs the light not too up to speed with it, but it's going to serve us very well. And I know that this is going to be something that we're going to be able to use as we move around the LG Cinebeam Q, which I would love to take a moment just to go into a little bit more detail about and tell you a little bit about the specification of this. The LG Cinebeam Q is a powerhouse of performance packed into a compact frame. Its small size and 360 degree rotating handle offer supreme portability, making it the perfect companion for any adventure. But don't let its size fool you. The Cinebeam Q boasts a stunning modern design that seamlessly blends into any home interior. When it comes to performance, it leaves conventional portable projectors in the dust. With a superior resolution, color accuracy, contrast ratio and brightness, it's a true game changer. Setting up is a breeze thanks to its auto screen adjustment feature, gone are those days of manual focus adjustments. With just a few seconds, it projects a clean cut rectangular screen ensuring a hassle free experience every time. Accessing your favorite streaming services is easier than ever with built-in WebOS while AirPlay 2 and ScreenShare allow you to mirror content from your mobile device seamlessly. Now you may think all this power comes with a hefty price tag, but fear not. While the LG Cinebeam Q may be priced slightly higher than your conventional portable projectors, it's comparable to 4K projectors on the market, making it a worthwhile investment for unparalleled performance and convenience. Okay. So as you can tell, an incredible piece of kit and I'm really looking forward to using it for the first time this evening. I am hoping that we're going to get a little bit of sunshine because it has got a little bit gray. We're due to have 
sunshine this evening sunset's not until like 8 p.m now which i absolutely love the days are longer and we just have a cloud that's just passing but i can see blue skies in the distance so I'm keeping my fingers crossed it's been a beautiful day and so hopefully lids and i will be able to enjoy a nice sunset this evening and watch this evening's movie or we'll be able to get cozy in the quite unique environment actually as the rain falls onto the greenhouse which could actually be a vibe in itself so i'm gonna go and get myself showered and ready for this evening I got up to grab my camera for one minute and <laughs> Mr. Porty took no time at all to jump in my seat. Did you, my boy? Oh, I'm so tired. Darling. You was not expecting this sofa this evening, were you? <laughs> of course, Barkley has taken himself to bed. He's like, I cannot with this. <laughs> what is my crazy parents doing? I'm going to bed. <laughs> but Porter. We'll not leave our side. He's living his best life right living now. Living your best life. You love the greenhouse. Where there's a fire, poor tea shall be. Fire, wool blankets, <laughs> and a good mood. I love the talented Mr. Ridley. That is exactly, which actually surprised me because I was definitely anticipating, by the way, that we were going to watch Love Actually tonight. Love Actually? Yeah. It's a Christmas film. That would be why we didn't watch it. I just think <laughs> of you and love. asked for the holiday, but it's a Christmas Film. Okay, fine. It's a good show. I'm no, glad. No. Notting Hill we could have done, could but have done. I feel like I'm taking a huge amounts of inspiration from the talented Mr. Ripley for my outfits at the moment, and I wanted to watch it again. Yeah. I think it's one of those films that... I've watched this a good few times now. Yeah, it's good. It is iconic, though. It is. I can see where our fashion inspiration is taken from. I've actually, sure. Have I told you about the skirt that I got? No. So, you know when we went to... Should this... we pause this? No. As in pause the... Oh, the film, yeah. <laughs> I just quickly was going to grab my camera to show events of having a full conversation. So there's a little remote actually with this that you can just... Oh, do you know a naked part? Oh, wee. So that's on pause. Um, so I've got... When we, do you remember when we went to Vista Village last summer and I picked up those three linen skirts? Yes. I didn't realise that one of those skirts is like almost a identical ah, copy. Ah, that's why they took the inspiration the, from... Must have been of the Gwyneth Paltrow. I always want to call her Gwyneth Paltrow. I know, I thought, when you, <laughs> when you said that, I thought you said it wrong. <laughs> well, Gwyneth Paltrow was, is wearing in this. It's a different colour, but the design is the same, so I'm definitely going to wear that nice. so much this summer. But yeah, so anyway, that's why we chose this one. My yeah. greenhouse looks very, very magical. Are you happy? Very happy. This is an environment that... It feels very cosy, I'm not going to lie. The <laughs> fire, the candles... <laughs> no. It must just be because it's cold enough. I doesn't feel cold in here. No, it's so nice in here, like but so. They nice. are. I was. I'd actually forgot. I was going to give them a little twizzle. Yeah. I've got a heater on as well in here. Oh really? Yeah, just hit it out the back, so it's oh, out of okay. sight. That's why. That's why. But we've got a lovely little platter yeah, put look. together, and I think this is such a good idea. Yes. It'll be so Works lovely well. to use that like around the house. Do you know what will be really great as well? in the summer when it's warm and you're almost guaranteed or you are guaranteed that it's going to be no rain on the patio outside sitting on the oxenwood sofas having this projector out and just watching a movie yeah. that would be really lovely that would be so good. i know there's only a few days of the year that you can realistically make that happen <laughs> because you have to have it dry warm and not windy yeah. <laughs> In England. Which we've had all of those seasons yes, today. <laughs> exactly. However, I would just like to confirm that the Cine Beam Q isn't actually for these uses. I'm just trying to have fun with it. Typically, you'd use this inside in your home. 
So if you are like, this, I think these kinds of things are really good because if you don't want a TV in your home... That is exactly what they're designed for. Yeah, because I think TVs, honestly, look at what we've you done just in do, Yeah, it's paint a wall. We've had, to, we've had to have like a big mirror hide our TV. Yes. If I had known we could have something like yeah, this... Yeah, you can just project it onto anything. Yeah, I would yeah. never have bothered putting a TV. And you can actually back project, so you project from behind. You can hang and project from the ceiling, wow. have it on the floor yeah. or obviously as we have this evening just slightly popped up so there are loads of different ways you can position it and then it just auto tunes itself but also into. this will probably pack down so if you're like yeah. going on a road trip or something that's exactly like that. it it goes up to like 120 inch wow. so it can go much bigger than what we've got just here anyway let's get back to it because yes. otherwise we're not going to bed <laughs> yeah 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 i've got pt in the morning babe as much as i'm loving my my date night i've got a schedule to sit to <laughs> but thank you so much honestly to get a clean greenhouse and the night doing something that I've never done in here as well. Yeah. And it is just so interesting for me in terms of like, obviously I got my greenhouse like three years ago now, but you never, it never ceases to amaze me what you can do with the space and how much fun you can have with it, even though it's just a greenhouse, mm. because we got one that's like nice and- It's like a room. Yeah, it feels like yeah. we've almost got a conservatory that's separate to the house as yeah. well, but I can have all my seedlings in here. It's really lovely. It's just a lot of work to get it ready for your arrival <laughs> don't be expecting this on any other occasion <laughs> this morning when i went into the greenhouse to do the pack down lids had actually already started doing it for me which was very lovely of her i had a very small amount of work to do in there and so it was a breeze this morning for me but that wraps up this week's video as always i'll leave the relevant links in the description box down below and i look forward to seeing you next wednesday 5 pm i hope you have a lovely rest of the week and i'll see you then take care